Hi everyone, uh, this is Sean Fitzpatrick in the Department of Math and Computer Science. I'm just going to give you a quick primer on using the Crowdmark platform for setting up, um, you know, alternative assessments, I think is the term that we're using right now that we can't do in-class assignments, uh, in-class testing. Uh, if, so you're giving someone a take-home assignment, you want a way to hand that out, get the work back in, you want to be able to grade it efficiently. Um, so this is just the Crowdmark website, so we know what I'm talking about here. But I'm going to jump over to Moodle. I've got Moodle open. Here's my course website for Math 14.10. Let me make this just a little bit um, bigger so we can see what's going on. Okay, and so I'd already set up an assignment. I'm going to do this for a take-home assignment because that's actually just the first thing I need to get out the door. I'm going to be doing this for a tutorial, and then actually I've got a test coming up on Thursday. I'm going to be doing this for that as well. But the assignment I already have written up, so let's do it with that. Now, I have it set up as a Moodle assignment. I don't really actually want my students submitting things as Moodle assignments because even if they hand it in as a PDF or a Word document, I've got to download all of those um, and get them to a TA. And typically what we end up doing is printing them all out and grading on paper. Um, there isn't a very efficient grading workflow for us in, in math um, using the Moodle assignment. So Crowdmark is something that we ran a pilot on a few years ago, two years ago to be precise. Um, a lot of people really were happy with it. We couldn't come up with the money to keep going with Crowdmark, and so we uh, we kind of let that fall by the wayside. But right now, Crowdmark is offering their services for free during the coronavirus outbreak. So the way you set up Crowdmark is you add a new external tool. So we add an activity, we go to external tool, we click add, okay? And so I'm gonna call this assignment three, okay? Uh, sorry about the keyboard noise, I'm at home on a Sunday and I don't have access to a headset mic. And under pre-configured tools, you'll find Crowdmark assessment. Uh, lucky for us, we still have the LTI set up from the last time we ran the pilot, and it seems to be working. So we're going to say Crowdmark Assessment. We don't actually have to set anything else up, but there's one thing you do need to do. Um, um, and I'm going to ask the Teaching Center if they can change this for me. We do have to set this up to open in a new window. The default behavior in Moodle is to open within an iframe inside of Moodle. Crowdmark has security settings that don't allow that. It just won't work if you ask for... Uh, the default. So switch that to new window, leave everything else alone. The other thing you might do is go down to grade and say, hey, I want this to be in my assignments grade category. That's where I happen to be putting this. Uh, maximum grade, you know what, I'm not actually sure what I wanted to add up to yet, um, but I'll put this at 30. We can always change that later if we have to. Um, for now, Maybe, maybe I choose hide while I'm getting things set up. I don't want the students poking around until I'm ready for them to see it. We can fix that later. Okay, so save, return to course. Takes a minute as Moodle tends to do. We hope it doesn't take too long. Waiting for Moodle, waiting for Moodle. All right, sorry about that exciting part. Okay, so now we see that assignment three. We click through. Um, if it's your first time, you might have to create an account here in Crowdmark. Um, if you used it in, during the pilot, but you haven't been back in since, you might have to reset your password. So we're going to create the assessment. Um, you'll notice it's actually automatically pulled the students in from Moodle. All 172 students enrolled in the course. They're already in there. Um, that might take about 30 seconds to a minute, depending on your class size, to pull them all in. Uh, the one thing that doesn't seem to be working right now um, immediately is it's not pulling in the TAs and other instructors in my course. That's okay, we can fix it later. I'll show you how to fix that. So if that's all ready to go, we click Save. Uh, we want to do assigned assessments. Administered assessments are the type that you hand out in the classroom. We're not doing those anymore because of the outbreak. We're going to do an assignment. So the nice thing with the assignment is we can distribute electronically, we can collect electronically, we don't ever have to touch paper, we don't have to see the students. Um, as much as we might like to, uh, we do it all electronically. So we click next. Okay. We go through that click didn't work. Try again. I mean, it's just being slow. Okay, we choose the due date. Now, this assignment was originally due for my students on Tuesday. I think I'm going to give them a little bit more time because of everything that's going on. So maybe I'm going to give them till the end of the week, right? Um, we choose uh, choose a time. 
I don't know. I don't like midnight as a deadline. But then again, I guess we're under lockdown. What else are they going to be doing but working on an assignment, right? Um, well, you know what? Let's give them 10 o'clock. I'm not going to put a late penalty. I do allow group submissions. I, I let my students submit their assignments in groups. You can check that box if you want. Obviously, you're probably not going to do that for a take-home test. Go to the next step. All right. Um, so we, um, we put a description here. And we're just going to say that this is sort of uh, a new version. So reproduced using CrowdMark. I'll send an email to my students with some other details on what exactly I want them to do. And um, one thing I could do actually is I could attach the original version of the assignment. I can show you the original version. It's sitting here, right? I have a PDF. That's my original version, what it looked like there. Um, so what I want to do is I want to basically take these questions and I want to put them up into CrowdMark. So one of the nice things, you'll see there's these little formatting tips, right? Um, CrowdMark understands um, basic markdown syntax, and you can see exactly these things here. Uh, in particular, if you know LaTeX markup for mathematical equations, you can put those in. This is definitely sort of a STEM-focused platform, okay? And so I went into the source file for my, for my assignment, and I extracted the, the text. So I'm going to pull that out here. We're going to copy. We're going to paste. I need to adjust the formatting slightly um, from what my LaTeX editor wants. Um, CrowdMark is going to want double dollar signs there. Um, the rest of that is going to work as is. Oh, except here. I want that to be bold. So there's double stars for bold, I think. Yep, there we go. Okay. Um, that question is ready to go. At 10 points, I'm not telling them, I guess, how the ABC breakdown is going to go here, but let's just leave it at that. Okay. Um, we can preview to see if it worked. Looks good. Okay. I've got three more questions to go, so let's add another question. Come back over. Right, go to question two. We're gonna copy. We're gonna paste. Just gonna check my formatting again. Um, I think we're okay. I mean, we can always just hit preview and ah, macros. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is because I'm defining commands in my in my program that that. It doesn't know, but that's okay. We can fix that. Or I'll fix it later. Maybe you don't want to watch this part. Okay, I can always come back and edit this later, so we don't have to worry yet. Um, okay, I'm going to add another question. So I come back over. Yeah. Okay, we paste that in. Okay, and... Let me grab the last one. Oh, wait, I didn't paste the whole question. I got one more sentence here. Copy, paste, okay, and oops. copy, paste. Okay, and yes, I've got a little bit of, of cleanup to do there. Um, you can also, of course, you can write things directly in here, and then you don't have that problem with, with macros that I'm having, where I'm, I'm copying this from another platform, where the commands are understood slightly differently. I define some shortcuts to save myself some typing. Okay, so we can have a look, see, does that look okay now? Looks great. Okay. So, once we got it all ready to go, we can save, go to the dashboard, okay. Um, we can always we can always go through later on and we can edit the assignment, right? Um, so under here under questions, if I need to change something, I just go there. Um, under team, I can click on this manage team button, okay? And if I don't see everyone that I need, what I can do is I can click here on this manage link, and it's going to now give me this sync with LTI. So if, this, if your other TAs are already in Moodle, you can click that sync with LTI button and it will find anyone who's got TA privileges or higher in Moodle. Um, or you can just add their email address and it will send them an invite. Okay, so I can click sync with LTI. 
it's going to find other instructors. So there's Sean Legg, who's doing my tutorials. There's Emma and Shar, they're doing uh, some of my tutorial grading. Um, I don't actually have my grad student grader who's grading my assignments for me in there, so I have to wait and I'll put him in Moodle and then we'll, we'll do that part over again. But again, we, we can do that later. Okay, so we can, we can leave that for now. Okay, so we can say that's fine. We'll go back, let's go back to my assessment. Do I feel like it's ready to go? If I do, all I gotta do is click that distribute to students button. They are going to get an email telling them that assignment is available. The email is going to contain some instructions on what they do. And essentially the students can either scan to a PDF, they can take a picture with their smartphone. Um, there's a number of file formats supported, PDF, PNG, and JPEG, I think are the file formats supported. And they have a pretty easy upload interface. They upload one file per question. So question one, they do the work, they take the picture, they upload it. Question two, they do the work, they take the picture, they upload it. Um, and so it's it's a pretty straightforward assignment. Um, you can in this comment library you can pre-populate a number of comments that you want your markers to use. Um, so if you if you want your marker to make certain comments, you want them to be worth certain values, you can do that. Um, they also allow you to import export. If you've been using this for a while, you might have ones that you use frequently. But of course, we're we're diving in here so we don't have that ready to go. You can also add comments as you go. Um, so once the assignment comes in, you can start grading. The grading interface is pretty straightforward. It's essentially like PDF markup. You add sticky notes, you can highlight, uh, there's a check mark, and you can, so you can type comments. So the nice thing is it remembers comments, so you can drag and drop comments and keep reusing them. You can assign point values to comments, so if you want that to always be a minus one deduction on a comment, you can do that automatically, right? Um, once the grading is done, there will be a results page. You can export the grades as a CSV. Um, you can export directly to your Moodle gradebook because of the, um, the LTI interface. One, and then you can also, once there are results here, you can, there will be another button you can click to just send the grades straight out to your students, right, by email. So they'll get everything returned to them electronically with all your feedback. Um, grades go into Moodle automatically. Um, things work pretty well. Um, I'll, uh, I'll include some links. I'm going to be sending all of this over to the Dean's office with some links and other resources that you can use um, for troubleshooting. And you can always send me an email if you want more information.